If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to begin reading in verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and on your feet shod, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to stand, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your Word. Lord, we thank you that you've given it to us in our own language and we may, uh, uh, we may hear it, may understand it, and may protect it in the days that we stand. Lord, we pray that you would uh, bless your word to the hearts of those that are listening this morning and bring glory to yourself. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, somewhat, somewhat familiar verses of Scripture, uh, maybe not for some, but Paul is closing his letter to the church in Ephesus. Now, in the modern day, and I would say my children's age and younger, uh, in the 30s and below, uh, Jared comes right between my two sons. Uh, Adam is 33, and uh, Jared is 32, and Matthew is 31. And that generation uh, didn't learn much about writing letters. Uh, I text Jared in incomplete sentences. And he takes me back in incomplete sentences. And my, my English teacher would give us a red mark if we had done that in the 70s. But uh, now, we te we, now we phone, we text, we Facebook. And sometimes we have to be reminded what a letter really is. Now, when I was in the third and fourth grade, we learned to write letters. And a letter has an opening or opening or a salutation it was called back then a hello honey how you doing and then it has a body which is the emphasis of the letter and then it has a conclusion and that's the most important statements revisited and then it's signed up on now paul in this part of the emphasis letter is at the conclusion He's wanting these to be the most important bits that the church at Ephesus takes out of what he is writing. This is the part, you need, to, you need to take it all, but this is the part you need to remember and know. And so as uh, we see the, the, the key word here, uh, when he begins, the beginning of the end, so to speak, finally. That's the beginning of the conclusion of the letter. These are the most important points that you need to get. Finally, my brethren, be you strong in the Lord. Now, I dare to say and sad to say the truth, we live in a very much of a day of weak Christians. Christians that cannot stand up for the fight. 
Christians that are not even well learned enough to know when Satan is attacking them. And to be strong, you have to know what you're strong in. Be strong in the Lord. Now, let me say, first of all, if you don't know the Lord, you can't be strong in it. So the first thing, do, do you really know the Lord Jesus Christ? That is the biggest question, the most important thing. We can live 110 years on this earth, and if we've not answered that question, right. we'll die and go to hell. Right. And 110 years will be complete waste. And, and, and so we see that uh, Paul wants us to understand and know how important this is that we uh, might be strong in the Lord. Now, we live in the last days. I don't think that's debatable even anymore. But with that said, we don't have to be weak and anemic Christians just because it's the last day. Uh, I think we've about convinced ourselves that we're going to hide in our church buildings and not do nothing in the last days. That's not what, certainly it's not what the Word of God teaches. He said be strong in the Lord, and so if he said it, certainly we have a, an ability, there's a means to be strong even though we're in the last days. And verse uh, 11, this is how we get it done. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, I dare say, if we were going into battle, uh, uh, Sister Hannah's uh, husband was in the military, my dad was in the military, Brother Junior was in the military, you're not going to go in the front line of battle half-dressed. Put on the whole armor. Uh, you know what? Uh, why, why sometimes the biggest reason we get shot is because we're missing a piece. And we're, we're amazed all of a sudden that, that we've been hit when we, we should have really saw it coming. Uh, and if, if we forget one piece, we're unprotected. We're not, we're, we're not uh, in a situation that we're really even fit for battle because we're not wearing the armor. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, that word wiles is not one that we really use a lot in the modern day, but it, 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 it means this, uh, strategies or strategies, plural, of the devil. Now, uh, in other words, he has more than one man. He has more than one plan. His attack extends past trying the same thing over and over and over again. Now, I dare to say people don't uh, like this. The devil often knows you better than you know yourself. That's right. And, and, and so we see, uh, just think about when he attacked Job. And he, you remember that there was that debate in heaven that says that the sons of God presented themselves uh, uh, before God and they had this discussion he and Satan had a discussion and he said uh, uh, God said have you considered my servant Job there's none like him in the earth and then the devil's response you have set a fence about him he already knew about that right he knew about Job's riches he knew about Job's protection he knew that Job had been set apart and he even knew about Job's children. You know, that's pretty scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. he, he, he knew all about him. And, and, and he, made this, uh, uh, he made this proclamation, you take all that away from him and he'll curse you to your face. And then, this is the rich, the rich truth to always remember. God said you can go this far, take everything he has. And... Uh, isn't it, isn't it a wonderful thing when you're under the gun to know that God is still over the devil? His authority exceeds what Satan can do. Now, with that said, remember, he is going to attack you, but ultimately, Christ is always the victor. So what is the strategy, the while, that he's using on you? Now, I dare say uh, we all kind of have our own person and who we are. And one thing that might bother me may be nothing to you. And on the flip side, 
things that worry you and bring you down may be a bump in the road to me and I, don't, I won't even slow down. So know yourself. I think that's very important as we face the devil to know what your weaknesses are. And often we do not know. And so he says that the why, uh, understand the, the strategies or the wiles of the devil. Verse 13, I mean, excuse me, uh, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, of darkness of this world. Now, a lot of people, sometimes we, we want to think about uh, the devil in hell in the center of the earth, uh, burning and, and burning people. But dear friend, where was the devils in the rebellion against God cast to? The earth. They were not cast to hell. They, cast, they were cast to the earth. A third of the angel led by Lucifer, Lucifer himself was cast here. Mm -hmm. I, say, I, I dare to say in the, in the modern day, we don't realize how much this demonic presence is out there. How many did the maniac of Gadara have? A thousand, right? Uh, how many are 10 legions? 10,000, right? How many did Mary Magdalene have? Seven. Right? And with that number of enemy out there, we've got to be ready. We, we can't take this as something simple and move ahead. There's nothing, besides seeing a soul go to hell, there's nothing that the devil delights in more than tearing down a Christian. He loves it. He, he rejoices in it. And, and so we see that with that being his goal and that being his emphasis that, that we certainly need to be prepared for when this comes because it is going to come. Now, the next thing, he, uh, the beginning of this verse, he says, uh, wrestle. For we wrestle. What is the object in wrestling? Now, me and my brother used to wrestle, and it was always sad because he's six years older than me. And you can imagine who got pinned, right? But, you know, the object in wrestling is not to kill someone. It's to pin them down. And then when you get them pinned, they come by and they count off up to ten, and then it's over with. So the wrestling is going to be to pin you down. And you know why? Because if you're really saved, he knows he can't touch your soul. And, and so he, he, he will stop you in your tracks. He will bring you down and he will pin you. That's what he wants. So he, uh, Paul reminds the church at Ephesus, listen, we're not dealing with a routine thing we're dealing with someone who actually rules the darkness. Verse 13. Seeing how great our enemy is, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day having done all to stand. Now, uh, that's a wonderful goal and that's a, that's a great thing and our mighty God of heaven will will help us do that. But you know what? Uh, after 30 years in the ministry, don't you, I, I want to do more than just stand, don't you? I, I want to do more than just be routine and hold the line. I want to go forward for Christ. You know, we're fixing to look at this armor, and you know what's not on it? A back plate. That's right. it, it, it's not there. Because you know what? We're not to turn back. Always move forward. Always continue in the things of Christ. And, and so we see, often we approach battle unprepared because we have, uh, we have uh, uh, neglected a piece of the army. Uh, me and Sarah was talking yesterday. Don was going to the store, and she took our orders for chocolate. 
and what, what we each wanted. And I told Sarah, my mother never called it a, a, a candy bar. She said a bar of candy. She said it backwards to what most people think. And she, does, she remembers the first time she ate one. And uh, uh, the soldiers were maneuvering here in World War II and getting ready for the battle uh, and to go back to France. And when they would drive by on jeeps, they would throw candy off the, and it would be nutrition bars. And see, what she didn't know, it wasn't just a regular candy bar. It was full of nutrition. That's what those are for. They go, you can go in the energy of one of those bars, and I'm sure Brother Junior ate them when he was in the service. They're, they're made to last for 24 hours to give you what you need to sustain you. And that's what we need. Now, in your lap this morning, there's your candy bar. And it, it, it will sustain you and give you exactly what you need. Then he says... Stand, if you want to do this, if you want to, if you want to be in the mark, stand there for, uh, therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Now, your loins are right here, your upper legs. That, that's your loins on a human being. And he says you need to be girded about with truth. Now, all my life, I cannot tell you how this Bible has been preached in so many different ways because it only teaches one thing. But it, but it gets messed up, don't it? I mean, I've heard some crazy doctrine in my lifetime, just foolish stuff. Haven't you? So when we take this to be our loin protector, have a good teacher. Have someone that knows about this book. Don't, don't, don't go just anybody that says they're a Christian. We, we need to know exactly. And you know what? This is the reality of the Word of God. Some of it's offensive. Some of it will leave, leave a little crawl in your throat, right? You're like, well, I've done that, right? So you better not, not just have the Word of God. I have copies of this book all over my house. Have it. Have the Word of God. In, in the central part of who you are, have the Word of God. And, and you can't get that by just simply attending church somewhere and studying the Word of God one day a week. It takes time. It takes energy. And this is, this is, what, we have, this is what we have to do. And having on the breastplate of righteousness... And now that uh, that word is sometimes misconstrued. Uh, one word that I want you to tell that it, it is not, and that they're different entities, is holiness. This is righteousness. Now, crazy to think, I actually taught school one time. Uh, it wasn't English, uh, but when I taught. You know what, uh, you know, there was only one answer to each question that was correct. And you marked the wrong ones. You marked the ones that were incorrect. So when we think of a breastplate of righteousness, I want to be right, don't you? I, I don't want to teach something that's an error. I don't want to teach something that's not true. I want to teach something that li ri lines up with the Scripture. And you know, here, uh, if I understand this correctly, if I do that, my central part of my body is protected. Now, on the flip side of that, if you're teaching something in error, it's wide open, right? The breastplate of righteousness yeah, uh, sin, and you know, another thing I did that old teachers used to do, and sometimes I got a, a, a brow rise from my students, I marked the wrong answers in red. Sister Hannah, do you still do that? Okay, good. Hadn't changed that much. <laughs> and that way they knew they had done something wrong. And, and, and so we see we can be right. This word is not too hard to be understood that we need 70 English translations. 
Right? You know what this book was translated in on a third grade knowledge of English? It is not a difficult book just because it says be and thou. It's a good book. It's a book to be treasured, a book to be loved. And so we see then that we need to, we need to just be right with the scriptures. We need to be correct. We need to have an understanding. And you, verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Now, I love what few things about medicine is in the word of God. And there he is, Luke was a physician. One of, the, one of the apostles was a physician. Now, that word preparation is, is like a pharmacist, like a, a making a medicine up something. Uh, Sister Dina knows all about mushrooms and herbs and all this stuff. And if you get sick, go to her. But uh, when Donna graduated or got her license to pass to practice midwifery, I got her what's called a petal and staple. It's a ceramic bowl and it has this thing where you crush it and you crush herbs and you crush uh, uh, mushrooms and, and create stuff in there. Now she's never used it. It's, their physicians usually get them. And, uh, but that's what this is, creating a preparation. Have, have your feet prepared with the gospel. And the gospel's not unclear either. It's so simple, a child can understand it. Trust in the Lord with all your soul and all your mind and all, all your heart. That's all it is. And mankind wants to make something more complicated. You need to be baptized. You need to receive the Holy Ghost. You needed this. You needed that. No, no, no. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What did Paul say to the Philippian jailer? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all thy heart, and thou shalt be saved. Very, very simple, isn't it? Very, very, very easy to understand that. And so when you go out to spread the gospel, and that's what they were doing, their shoes were gospel. These are, these are Walmart right here. Uh, be ready. How can you share something you don't understand yourself? Right? And, and, and so we, we find then that he says, be ready with the gospel when you get there. And above all, the, the ending sentence, the most important sentence of the conclusion of the letter, we find right here, above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, I want you to notice the letter, uh, the wording, it just says, of faith. Now, if it said, of the faith, it would mean something different. Now, the Bible does say time and time again in the New Testament, the faith. The faith, singular. Meaning the oracles and truths handed down by Christ to his men. That is the faith. But faith of itself is just confidence and belief. Take, take the shield of faith. Now, when you go into battle, I think first and foremost, you have to believe whatever you're fighting for is worth it, don't you? I'm not going to go into battle and not even, not even believe what I'm fighting for, right? When the southern states, when we left the Union, we believed, it wasn't over slavery. It was, they were infringing on our rights to do things like we wanted them done, right? I believe that's, that's worth fighting for. I still believe that's worth fighting for. And in the very same way, if you go to battle and you don't even believe what you're fighting for, you know what? You're going to lose. <laughs> you're going to get knocked down. You're, you're, you're going to suffer defeat. Why? Because you don't even have the energy to do it. You, you don't even have the strength to go after it because what? In, in reality, you don't even you don't even care. And I think that's the modern day Christian is really they don't care. And, and so we must have faith that Jesus Christ is able. We must have faith that God Jehovah 
does sit on his mighty throne. And the Bible says he does everything after the counsel of his own will. He don't need your help. He don't need my help. He doesn't need anybody's help. You know why? Because he's God. And we, with that kind of confidence, we can, we can go into battle. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, if you underline in your Bible, underline darts, plural. Anybody play darts? I've never been good at it, but I love to play. And you know what? When you divide up, you have more than one, right? I think the set at work, and while they let elderly people play darts, I'm not sure. I can see the incident report coming, uh, but that's not my business. Uh, they have three apiece, three red ones, three black ones, and they throw the darts. And if they miss it the first time, they got two more chances, don't they? The devil has an endless supply of darts. I will guarantee you, if he misses you this time, he's going to throw again. He is going to... And you know what? If we don't have that shield to do like this with, he's going to blow out one day. Me and Bella likes to do archery. And we have a, a, a one set up in the back. People. And, and she says, I can't shoot. But the second one I did, I got a bullseye. I considered that pretty good myself. <laughs> I'm like, well, I can shoot a little bit. There we go. And, you know, the first time when I missed the whole target, if I threw my bow down and walked away, I'd have never got a bullseye, would I? And the devil is a lot more constant than Larry Lafferty. That's scary, isn't it? He'll shoot you again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And if you don't have that faith to do this with, you know what? He's gonna hit you. He, he, it's gonna sting, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna cause injury. We don't need that with everything else going on in 2024. The last thing we need is a direct hit from Satan, but it comes. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Now, I've preached this for 25 years. If anything Baptist people do is minimize the role of the Holy Ghost. And shame on us for doing so. That's why a lot of people don't understand that, Lord, please come into my heart. It's not redemption. If the Holy Ghost is not there, all you've done is said some words. <laughs> right? You wonder why people don't make very long in Christianity anymore? Mostly it's because of that right there. And, and so we see that the helmet is something that's integral. This is the most important part of your body up here. And it, it controls everything else. Even the ability to do I don't have to think to do this. And you know why? Because the brain, the brain is so powerful I don't have to go, okay, I want to raise my arm. I just raise it without even, without even any effort. And he says, protect this the most. How do you protect your brain? Now, when I was a kid, and it may be why we're so crazy now, we didn't have helmets to ride our bike. We just rode our bike. Remember the 70s one with a big sissy bar on the back? They were really cool. And now see, you know, we had, we had all the cool items. Um, but we didn't have a helmet, did we? <laughs> it might explain some things, I don't know. Uh, but you need a helmet. Now, I remember when I was a boy, James, that's my brother, had, had a friend, and uh, he was uh, Spires, that was his last name, Arnold Spires. And next door to the house we lived in was another little house and it was empty and all the kids would gather in that driveway and then across 
the road was the creek, the swimming hole where everybody swam in. And him and his girlfriend were chasing for a parking spot. Now the sad truth is she was in, a, in an F-150 and he was on a mini bike. So you can imagine how that went. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Arnold didn't have his helmet on. Mm -hmm. His head just popped. Mm -hmm. We need our helmets on, don't we? Yes, we, do. we need to be ready. Listen, don't think the devil's so full hearty that he's not going to attack you. Right. He is. I can guarantee you he will. And if we don't have on <laughs> that helmet uh, provided by here, it says the Spirit or the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, however you want to, uh, the terms in that is always referring to the same being. And how does that work? Larry, you don't need to be here. Go somewhere else. That's, you know, it never says in the Bible anywhere, Larry, you don't need to go to the liquor store. It doesn't address me directly, right? Right. But if I get something outside the will of the Lord, and it don't have to be something like drinking and all that mess, just where I shouldn't be. You know what you should do? You should listen to that immediately and walk away. Yep. That's what we should do. Yep. It'll protect your helmet. You know what? We don't need to be looking with admiration at the world. Now, in the modern day, you know, we used to have to drive to Clarksville, which was probably a help to us to see a movie. There wasn't, there wasn't a theater in Dover. Still not. And you had to, hey, you ever thought, so, how foolish it is to pay money for entry to your spirit? Pay, pay money when you get there to go in. And the trash and the filth that they fill you with. Now we can just download, right? right. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. And you know what? If you get the impulse to say, you know what? I really probably shouldn't be watching this. Everybody can do like that and flick everything else off their screen, flick that one too. Yep. And so we see that we need to be very, very cautious that we have our helmet on and that things don't get up here that don't need to be there. And then we need to be in the Word. Do you know why you believe what you do believe? There's offensive doctrines in the Word of God, don't you think? I don't like to be called a sinner, but I know that I am. And you know how I know? Right here. Jared's been taking high hair and all ever since January. Romans 6, 5, Five, six, and seven. I'm glad next month Romans chapter eight starts because I need a relief, right? But you know what? Everything that Jared called is true. And you know how I know it's true? It's from the Word of God. Amen. I can't I can't be upset at Jared, can I? How well do you know your Bible? The things I believe today, if you'd have told me 30 years ago that I believe what I do today, I would tell you that you were crazy and you needed to go down to West Tennessee Mental Health Center. <laughs> but you know how I came to those conclusions? By study. Yep. And if it's in there, you know what? I don't have to be calm. I don't have to be excited. That's the Word of God, and I've said it. Right? And, and so we find then, as Paul is writing to this church, he says you need to be ready for the attack. You need to be ready for what's coming. Now very quickly, if you are ready, if you are able, go me the Gospel of Matthew, and we'll see the next piece to get you moving, and we'll close. Matthew 16, verse 23. Matthew 16, uh, beginning in verse uh, 23. The Bible says, But he, meaning Christ, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. 
Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Now, first of all, was Peter, had Satan entered Peter? No. He was going to enter somebody that night, but it wasn't Peter. You know what, why Christ said that? You're acting like the devil. And remember what he said? He said, listen, there's one of you that's going to betray me. And I will be, I, I will be given over to the hands of sinner and put on a cross. Now, that does sound hard, don't it? That, that sounds rough. And to understand the misery of that, you have to understand how this process happened. But with, with, with that aside, do y'all want to see me go to the cross? See, Peter was... He was speaking too quick, but you know what? He loved, he loved Jesus. But sometimes, look, this is always that something that will apply. Your love with man should always be under the love of the plan of God. The love of God's plan is your primary love. And so he was rebuked and said, Peter, uh, you don't even know, you don't even savor or enjoy or take hold of the plan of God. You savor not the things of God, but that be of men. Verse 24, then said Jesus unto the disciple, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Right. Now let me ask you in closing, are you ready for your cross? Mm. Only you. Now I'll say this in a certainty. If you don't have your armor on, you're not ready. If you're not strengthened up a little bit, you're not ready. If your nutrition, your spiritual nutrition doesn't exceed this, you're not ready. But if you savor us, that's what he told Peter. If you love it, 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 you know, have you ever had some really good food? Donna, last night, I was feeling rotten after working on the, the, the cellar, and she and the girls went down uh, to the little food booths that we're having, and Donna bought me back probably the best fish I ever ate in my life. And it was so good. The black man made it, so it was so good that when I put it in my mouth, I just kind of held it there for a minute. Because it was, it tasted so good. That's savor. Do you do you savor the things of God? Do you do you just hold them and enjoy them for a second? See that'll get you ready. Now the last thing is taking up the cross. Yeah. Now a cross is very individualized. It the one that would work for me would not work for someone that's taller than me. Y'all all know Will, Sarah Elizabeth's brother, he's 6'4". The same cross wouldn't work for us, right? You know, one thing is just like this. See, Will's span would need about more, seven more inches than mine. That, that, that's the difference. The cross is individual. You know what my cross is? And only the answer of God. I have no idea why he placed me in the ministry except that I know this. It is my cross and it is my responsibility every day to pick it up and go again. And you know, sometimes it's very difficult. <coughs> you know, th this is the reality though. If we would do it faithfully, yeah. we get stronger. Yeah. How, how, how do you build your muscles? You don't go one, two, and then look like a muscle man, do you? It takes time. It takes nutrition. You want to build muscle mass? Increase your protein. Right. And this has to be done time and time. But you know what? Eventually, you're strong enough to do it. And will the cross still be there? Yeah, it'll still be there, but you know, every day that you carry it, it'll get a little easier. But if you drop it, 
And then two months later, you know, Brother Jarrett was talking about what David did. He, he was so far out of the will of God, he didn't even know he was out of the will of God. And, and you know what? After that baby died, it got his attention. Read Psalms 51. That, that was his reaction to understand that he, he realized how far out of the will of God he was. That's right. you, know, you know what he did? He picked his cross back up. He realized then how he had left the Lord. Did, did David become lost again? And that, that, that sounds good. You know what? The Bible says this concerning David. He's a man after my own heart. That's right. In other words, he thinks like me. Was he lost again? No. But he sure acted like it, didn't he? He dropped his cross. That cross is there for a reason. I don't know what yours is. I, I know what mine is. I have six children in a ministry. Those are my crosses. What about you? What, what, what is the thing? And if you don't have one and you're saved, you dropped it back there somewhere. Because if you're saved, you have a cross. If it's nothing more than just living in the image of Christ every day, you have a cross. And if you don't think you do, run back three or four miles and find it because you got one. Pick it back up, dust it off, and get ready to go again. That's right. We need to be in the will of God, do we not? Amen. It's not a pleasant place. Everybody, like, oh, you feel so good running with Jesus. <laughs> I've never had that experience yet, and I've been serving the Lord for over 40 years. It's a cross. Mm -hmm. I'd gladly bear it, but I'd be lying to say if it wasn't a cross. It's a burden. You know, look around you. In this world, in this dispensation, sinners have more fun than we do. But listen, their time is very short. When eternity comes, when they draw their last breath here, they have nothing. Mm -hmm. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, I'll say this and we're going to close. When he says, I never knew you, a sovereign God knows all things, right? He didn't say, I never knew you were there. I never knew you in redemption. Right. That's the difference. What about you? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? 